You're listening to the Send It Podcast with Andrew Rawls on World Talk Radio. Roman 7 Juniper Bravo, Dean Ground, uh, turn right on Bravo. Runway uh, 1 AF, Bravo, and um, it'll merge with Alpha to Alpha 3. brief episode on line twists. I know there's a lot of folks out there that, again, are coming off of A, student status, and they're concerned about getting a line twist and how they react to it. It's going to be a, uh, for them, maybe a life or death moment, or if they're going to have to use their emergency procedures. I think there's this misconception that line twists are a malfunction. If you, if you back up and you read a lot of literature on how you get line twists, and I've had line twists hundreds of times, and uh, I've also had riser twists, riser apps, whatever you call them, where the risers are twisted when the uh, employment bag is set inside the main packing tray. It's it's not a malfunction. It can turn into a malfunction. But again, a lot of the literature points that the uh, the line twists occur as a result of how one is stowing their lines and how they take the, the deployment bag and put it into uh, the main packing tray. You can induce a twist if you take your deployment bag after you stowed your lines and you, uh, you twist it and set it in the packing tray. And again, if you've got twists on your lines and you're stowing those, then um, there's more uh, potential for a bag spin. Now, a lot of people have gone to semi stowless deployment bags because they think that that leads to a more on-heading opening, and maybe the results and testing is there for that. I still use a traditional deployment bag where I, I have the side stows. Certainly, it makes packing a lot more easier, that being the semi stowless bag. You're just figure eighting and then just, you know, setting the, uh, the tabs on the side of the deployment bag. It makes it come out a lot nicer. Now, whether or not that leads to more on-heading openings and less potential for line twists, I, I don't know. A lot of people think it does, and it very well may on some of the smaller type canopies. I know that some of the manufacturers out there, um, I know Sunpath doesn't even allow you to order. I'll double check a semi stowless bag on certain models of containers. I think it's 130 below. Perhaps they've bumped it up to 150. But, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to folks that say, hey, the semi stowless bag will work better for larger canopies. And then some folks, even the manufacturers, the ones like Sunpath that do a lot of research and development, they've, uh, they've indicated that it really, I guess, doesn't do a lot for the larger canopies considering, um, you know, they don't even offered as an option. So again, just be very careful how you stow your lines and how you take your deployment bag over the container and set it into the main packing tray. Make sure at the end of each day you uh, you take your control lines and you, you get out any type of twists in those before you set them. And then you shouldn't really run into to line twists as often as you think. A lot of times the line twist too can be based on body position. And I think the body position is a piece of it. Again, I think based on, based on what I've seen and what I've incurred throughout my career and the jumps that I've had, I think it has more to do with the the packing than it does body position, especially if somebody's comfortable slowing down and flying belly. You can fly consistently the same way on your belly and do four or five jumps in a row. And, uh, you know, several of those are line twists and, and then some of them aren't. So I guess a lot of people think that, you know, if you've got a, a you're, you're reaching back and you're pulling, you know, you, you may be, uh, your body may be going one way and then the canopy's opening another. You know, I think uh, it's actually uh, more critical body position is when you're doing hop and pops or pulling out the door, you know, you're, you're pulling what they call down the hill. That's actually where most of the line twists that I've had in my career have occurred on hop and pops while I'm pulling out the door and, you know, I'm not belly to earth and I've got, again, my body going one way and the canopy going out the other. So, and you know, a lot of people say that uh, malfunctions and skydiving are a result of, uh, you know, I guess bad information, bad packing, bad gear maintenance and, and bad body position. And uh, the line twists, again, I think a lot of them are actually solvable without you having to cut away. Again, it's going to depend on your comfort level and the altitude that you're at. But um, I learned a real tr a real good trick from uh, a coach in flight one, and then it was subsequently cemented by another canopy coach this past summer. And they're so good at actually resolving the line twist issue, they can actually get out of a line twist before it occurs. Like they'll see it develop, I guess, when the canopy's coming out of the bag, and then they can use their hands and, and grab the risers and twists and take those twists down into the risers before the line twists actually develop. Again, depending upon whether or not you're going to have to cut away and go to your reserve canopy on a 
line twist is going to be based upon the altitude that you're at, how fast you're spinning, if you're altitude aware, and uh, if you're flying some type of very high performance canopy. Again, a lot of people think that uh, flying a high performance canopy means only going faster, right? There's the faster reaction time. You've got to land the thing, right? No, everything is sped up. Malfunctions are sped up. The reaction time to those malfunctions is sped up. So a line twist on a, you know, an 84 Valkyrie is going to be a hell of a lot different than a Saber 2 210. And I'm not going to put a number on the number of uh, twists that are in, you know, I've had, I'm looking now, I've had uh, line twists where it's seven or eight wraps deep, but I'm not spinning and I'm actually, you know, I'm four or 5,000 feet and I feel comfortable getting out of them. So, you know, I don't think immediately, you know, you just see line twists and cut away. Some of them can be resolved using techniques that you've, you probably learned in AFF, just, uh, you know, grabbing both risers and twisting those risers in the direction of the twist and working those twists down into the risers and then releasing them all together. Or, uh, you know, just grabbing both risers and kicking in the, uh, the direction the line twists are in in order to kind of spin yourself out of it. Um, the former I've had more success with, but um, again, it, it all depends on what altitude you're at. So again, I hate to label it as a, as a malfunction. I think it, the, the proper terminology would be that it can lead to a malfunction, right? Especially if you're low altitude, but it's, you, there's people all the time. There's plenty of videos about there, not just skydivers, but base jumpers that are landing canopies with line twists, which is another reason why, you know, people talk about sky hooks and, and MARD systems and, you know, them having a, some type of permanent line twist in their reserve, you know, that's one of the reasons why they don't use a, a MARD system. And uh, I, I don't buy it because even if I have line twists in my reserve, you know, you can still land and a lot of times even control the canopy, even if there's twists in the lines. So just wanted to throw that out there today. You're going to inevitably, if you skydive, you're going to get line twists. And I don't care if you pack for yourself or you pack, you have somebody pack for you. It's just part of the sport. Do what you can to make sure that uh, you're packing uh, correctly. Slow things down. Make sure that, again, there's some type of consistency built into how you pack and repetitive. You do the same thing over and over again. You know, it's it's very important skydiving to get in a habit, the same habit of doing things, especially if you do a lot of jumps. And think about your body position when you deploy. Make sure that uh, they say that you're belly to earth. You're not looking up too quickly and watching the canopy open and you're not looking over a shoulder as you're uh, you're a pulling pilot shoot. You know, and you do those things and, and you really lower the odds and chances of having a line twist and a malfunction. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I wanted to give my two cents on it. I see a lot of comments these days about how uh, often line twists occur when skydiving, if it's something that you can completely avoid. Um, but again, it's inevitable in the sport. You're going to have uh, issues with line twists and canopies. And, you know, it's just about how you stay calm and, and you react. They, like I said, have said throughout this these podcasts, slow is the new fast. You're really trying to stay focused and slow and, and uh, realize that you have time to uh to fix the issues. I can't stress that enough. You overreact and you do things and you can't you can't undo them, right? You know, if you slow things down and just kind of remember what you've been taught, the gear and technology is there to help you uh, get down to the ground safely. Anyways, hopefully these tips and pointers will prove to be useful this weekend or whenever your next skydive is. You've just listened to Send It, a skydiving podcast hosted by Andrew Rawls on World Talk Radio. Send It is the number one skydiving podcast on the planet, bringing listeners up-to-date information on all things sky sports. Be sure to visit senditradio.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our amazing bonus content and articles. If you enjoyed this episode, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review. Until next time, three, two, one. See ya.